We're still on the topic proof by induction and in this video we are going to be looking at problems involving differentiation. Let's look at this question here. Given that A is a constant, prove by mathematical induction that for every positive integer n, d to the n by dx to the n of x e of a x is equal to n of a to the power of n minus 1 of e to the power of a x plus a to the power of n of x of e to the power of a x. Okay, so let's work on this question here. Now, the procedure remains the same. First, we are going to start by proving for n is equal to 1. When n is equal to 1, the left-hand side will be d by dx of x e to the ax. So this is differentiation of products. So I'll have e to the power of ax times the derivative with respect to x of x plus x times the derivative of e to the ax with respect to x. Now, differentiating x with respect to x, we get 1. And multiplying that to e to the power of ax, we get e to the power of ax. And that's plus differentiating e to the power of ax with respect to x, we get a of e to the power of ax. And we multiply that to x, so we have an a of x of e to the power of ax. So this is what we get on the left-hand side. Now on the right-hand side, if n is equal to 1, we'll be having 1 of a to the power of 1 minus 1 of e to the ax, and that's plus a to the power of 1 of x e to the power of ax. And this simplifies to here, 1 minus 1 is 0, so a to the power of 0 is 1. So we have e to the power of ax remaining. And that's going to be plus. Here we'll be having a of x e to the ax. And I think you can see that this is equal to the left hand side. And therefore the formula is true for n is equal to 1. So that's it for this part. Let's go on to making the assumption. So I'll say assume true for n is equal to k. So here, what that means is in place of n, I'm substituting with k. That's the assumption that we're making. So we are assuming that the formula is true for n is equal to k, where k is some positive integer. Okay, so let's write that down. So we'll be having d to the k by dx to the k of x of e to the ax is equal to k of a to the power of k minus 1 of e to the ax. And that's plus a to the power of k of x of e to the power of ax. Okay, so that's the assumption right here. Now we now want to prove for n is equal to k plus 1. Now for n is equal to k plus 1, we are saying here in the original formula, we are substituting k plus 1 for n. So that means that we'll be having d to the k plus 1 by dx to the k plus 1 of x e to the ax. So we want to see if this is going to be true for n is equal to k plus 1. Now this is equal to d by dx of d to the k by dx to the k of x e to the a x like this so it's more like a loss of indices type of thing going on here 
All right, so from the assumption d to the k by dx to the power k of x e to the ax is what we got here. So I can put in place of that, I can put what's on the right side. That's k of a to the k minus 1 of e to the ax plus a to the k of x of e to the power of ax. So like this. So let's simplify this and I'll need some space. So this is equal to, so differentiating k of a to the power k minus 1 of e to the power of ax, I can see that this part here is a constant. So I will just write that down. That's k of a to the power k minus 1 like this. And differentiating e to the ax, I get a of e to the ax. And that's going to be plus. Here, I'll do differentiation of products. So I'll have a to the power k of x as a term and e to the power of ax as a separate term. So I'm differentiating uh, products for those two functions. So that'll be e to the ax times the derivative with respect to x of a to the power k of x plus a to the power k of x times the derivative with respect to x of e to the ax. Okay, so let's simplify this. So I'll bring down what we have here, k a to the k minus 1 dot a e to the ax. And here, if I differentiate a to the power of k of x, I get a to the power of k. And uh, I multiply that to e to the power of ax. So I have e to the power of ax multiplying a to the k and that's plus i've got a to the power of k of x and here i'll differentiate e to the power of ax to get a of e to the power of ax so we can continue simplifying multiplying a to the power of k minus 1 by a which is a to the power of 1 we're going to add the powers and k minus 1 plus 1 gives us k so we'll be having it as k of a to the k of e to the ax and that's plus multiplying this two i'll just write it as a to the k of e to the ax and that's plus for this one here if i multiply a to the k by a to the power of one i get a to the power of k plus one so that's of x e to the ax all right, next step, I'm seeing that for these two terms, I can combine them into a single term by factoring out e to the power of ax and a to the power of k, which are common. So if I do so, for these two terms, I will have k plus 1 factored into the bracket. And that's plus a to the k plus 1 of x of e to the ax. So I'm going to rearrange this one more time. So I'll be having here k plus 1. And for a to the power of k, I'm going to write that as a to the power of k plus 1 minus 1. And I have e to the ax. And that's plus a to the k plus 1 of x of e to the ax okay so here i've separated all the k plus ones and the reason for that is we want to prove whether if this is going to give us something that is in the form of the original formula here so if i am going to substitute n back for where k plus one is I'm sure you can see that what we have obtained is the same as the formula that we have here. So that's what you will be seeking to have whatever you're proving for n is equal to k plus 1 to come to the same form if you are to replace n back to where k plus 1 is of the original formula. And that's what we have obtained. So here I can say, hence proved true 
for n is equal to k plus 1. So I can now go on to make the conclusion that if true, 4n is equal to k, it is also true for n is equal to k plus 1. And therefore, by mathematical induction, is true for every positive integer n. And that's our conclusion, and that ends the question here.